how many of you uh, are wondering how to comply with the CMS rule? Are you confused uh, whether to pick a niche solution or a proven API-led integration platform? In today's session, I'll be explaining the interoperability problem, basics of fire standard and fire design patterns. Further, I'll introduce WSO2 Open Healthcare Platform and explain key differentiations of WSO2's platform in contrast to other solutions. Let's look at the interoperability problem. As a patient, you may first buy one of the health plans from healthcare marketplace. You may have to visit a healthcare provider in order to get a treatment. Later on, you may realize that you are paying too much for the current plan and may decide may decide to switch to a different health plan. Due to this switch, you'll <clears throat> now have to find an in-network uh, health provider <clears throat> and the journey may go on. Moving from a provider to another, a health plan to another, brings challenges in creating a comprehensive longitudinal view of a patient's health history. So why, it is, why it, is it important to uh, create a longitudinal view of patient's health history? Firstly, if patients don't accompany their health data, that will create silos at each provider or the pair. So if, if there are silos, if there are many silos, uh, it will impact the, uh, the care that you would uh, receive as a patient. So in order to overcome these silos of health data, you have to uh, create a, a longitudinal view of the patient's health history. If you, if you know your history, if you accompany your uh, health history with you, then you, you as a patient can make a better decision on selecting which healthcare provider that you want to get the treatments from. And also if you, Basically, if you are to inform uh, providers, uh, healthcare providers uh, with your history, health history, and then get a better, you, you, you can possibly get a better health outcome from those providers. If you do not do that, uh, the providers would look at only the information that you give at that moment, and they would, uh, they would not provide you the better uh, uh, health, yeah, health outcomes uh, in that particular situation. And the other, uh, other factor is uh, patients would get a chance to select what the best health coverage plan for them uh, based on the, you know, they, they see, they have their, the data that they carried uh, throughout their journey and they, they would, they can uh, try uh, different coverage plans and take an informed decision as to uh, select a better uh, health coverage plan. So in order to solve this interoperability problem in the US, there's a regulation uh, that uh, has been uh, published by the uh, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS. So the rule is the interoperability and patient access final rule. Uh, this uh, rule basically gets en enforced on July 1st, 2021, but ideally you, you have to uh, you know, finish the implementation by January 1st, 2021. So with the regulation, uh, you have to expose, as a payer, you have to expose claims and encounter data, clinical data, provider directory, uh, and also drug formulary uh, data via FHIR APIs. So what is FHIR? FHIR is the uh, fast healthcare interoperability resources. So if we look at the history of how, how uh, the HL7 organization uh, came up with this FHIR format, uh, you know, the history went way back into 1987, uh, where they released the first version of the uh, HL7. And then uh, gradually uh, they get the uh, community involved, get the feedback from the uh, healthcare community and then improved 
the implementability of the uh, standard, interoperability standard, and uh, gradually uh, release the fire R4 uh, release four in 2019. Still, 95% of US healthcare organizations use HL7V2, uh, but there are more than 35 countries currently have uh, HL7V2 uh, implementations. Wi-Fi is better. So uh, in contrast to the previous HL7 uh, versions, Fire is way better when it comes to the implementation. So when they uh, designed the fire specification, they uh, put a strong focus on the implementation of it. So, so that the developer community, the health uh, IT uh, uh, providers would adopt these, these standard and you know, easily implement uh, fire standard across the uh, you know, enterprises. And interoperability is provided out of the box with the fire. Uh, Fire has a set of base resources, and it allows you to extend the base resources to fit uh, your region or your country. So uh, the typical example would be the uh, US again. Uh, US has come up with its own set of variations of the uh, Fire base resources, and uh, there are a carrying uh, implementation guide, Da Vinci implementation guide, US 4, it tends the uh, set of base fire resources. Uh, and then uh, fire leverages the latest web standards like XML, JSON, HTTP, uh, OAuth2, etc. So uh, you can easily you know, use fire within your existing uh, API uh, gateways, uh, integration solutions, etc. Support for RESTful services architecture will uh, make fire widely used and easy to build applications uh, using the Fire APIs. So uh, Fire has defined the REST uh, interface, clear REST, clearly defined the REST in interface so that uh, consumers can consume the Fire resources and uh, uh, you know, st start uh, using the uh, resources that are exposed by the payers as well as healthcare providers. It's concise and easily understood uh, specification. So anyone can read the HL7 uh, uh, web page, go to the HL7 web page and uh, find the file uh, specific page. And you can go through uh, the documents that are developer friendly, developer oriented documents, architectural documents, et cetera. Uh, that'll help you to understand the specification easily. And uh, Fire basically uh, serialized to a human readable format like XML JSON so that it, uh, you can read the uh, output uh, responses, requests, and uh, understand what's happening if you have some sort of a business uh, object knowledge on the healthcare domain. So fire components, uh, basically there are two components. Uh, there are fire resources and there's a REST API wrapped around these fire resources. So uh, I'll talk about the fire resources in next slide, uh, but uh, when it comes to the REST API, there's a standard set of uh, HTTP operations that they uh, you know, define. For all the resources you can uh, define, expose uh, these uh, HTTP operations. So there's a search method, there's a get, uh, get operation uh, on a particular fire resource, and there are post methods, uh, delete, etc. as well. So here is a snapshot of the fire resources. Uh, so there are the different layers in the fire uh, standard. That's how they have organized the uh, resources. So they, this, uh, this, uh, this is an example of the patient fire resource. So as you can see, uh, the attributes are clearly defined, the cardinality is uh, clearly defined. And if there are uh, attributes that have the codable concepts or multiple uh, options, and that also clearly defined in the uh, fire specification. 
So in order to uh, provide uh, or solve this interoperability problem, uh, there are two main solutions. Uh, so the first architectural pattern uh, that I'm going to explain is the fire API facade. So this is a real, real time transformation of your data into the fire format and exposed through the fire APIs. So in a typical healthcare organization, data can be in uh, many uh, disparate uh, systems. So uh, these, these are not in the fire form. So you can basically consume, connect to those systems and transform them into the fire format and then expose a fire API uh, out of it. So when a request comes, the uh, API would uh, delegate the request to your uh, data transformation layer, and then the data transformation layer would connect to multiple data sources and transform them into the fire format and send a response back. So this is uh, more of a, more of a real time uh, request response type uh, architectural pattern. There's another uh, pattern uh, which is fire repository based. Uh, pattern where uh, there's a slight delay uh, of the data that you uh, may uh, receive uh, since uh, this operates in an asynchronous mode. So again, uh, you would connect to the uh, different uh, source systems and uh, there would be a periodical task that would uh, periodically connect to those systems and transform them into fire format and then uh, store them in a fire repository. Fire repository is, uh, it, it can be a relational or a you know, SQL database that, uh, which serializes the fire resources as it is. And then on top of the fire repository, uh, you can basically apply uh, search indexes and expose uh, fire APIs uh, out of it. So now when a request comes uh, through a fire API, the, uh, the API layer would just query the uh, fire repository, fetch the necessary uh, response, and then uh, send it back to the uh, client. So this, this architecture pattern is more desirable if you uh, use the bulk uh, data exchange, if you have a requirement to exchange bulk uh, data. And this is uh, desirable if you uh, want to uh, expose simple uh, fire resources uh, through the wire. So WSO2 has come up with uh, this uh, WSO2 Open Healthcare Platform, which supports both those solution patterns. So you can use the real-time API facade pattern as well as the fire repository-based uh, fire server pattern using WSO2 Open Health Healthcare Platform. This diagram explains the reference architecture of the uh, platform. Uh, there are source systems and the platform comes with a set of accelerators that will help you to speed up the transformation process and uh, expose your fire data as fire APIs through a fire server. And there's a developer portal where your fire APIs will be published to uh, that can be uh, this, that can be exposed to your third party application developers where they come and search and discover the APIs and then uh, start to consume uh, those APIs. And uh, there are smart on fire applications that can uh, you know, consume these fire APIs from through the fire server. WSO2 Open Healthcare Platform is OpenID Connect certified. Uh, with, it supports OpenID Connect and O2 uh, flows. Uh, and uh, if you are familiar with Smart on Fire, it mandates uh, this authorization code run type and OpenID Connect flow. So uh, basically, the solution uh, helps you to expose your data as a fire server uh, and uh, allow your third party application developers to build smart on fire apps. I'll go into details uh, of each accelerator in next few slides. Uh, in addition to these, uh, we have the capability to generate uh, real time as well as historical alerts analytics uh, on top of your fire APIs. 
so that you, you can basically take informed uh, decisions uh, on the usage of those fire APIs and then also uh, can uh, you know run complex rules and detect uh, patterns etc on top of the uh, fire APIs. So the first accelerator that we have built is the uh, fire data transformation connectors. These are auto-generative. Uh, so if, uh, you know, what does it mean by auto-generative is if there's a new uh, fire extension tomorrow, uh, we can basically uh, run, the, run the tool that we have built and generate a connector and provide the connector to you. So all these connectors we have built for the uh, Fire International Standard, Fire Darwin uh, uh, Data Exchange, uh, US Core Standard, uh, Carine, uh, et cetera. Uh, those are auto-generated from by reading the uh, fire specification. So these connectors will help you to transform your XML JSON payloads into the fire format. You can connect to multiple uh, you know, different uh, data sources and gradually build this fire resource uh, and then uh, serialize it to XML JSON or to the uh, uh, fire repository. WS2 Open Healthcare Platform provide low code integration. Uh, you can uh, you have a integration studio that can be used to drag and drop uh, several uh, transformation connectors, mediators, and then build your integration flow uh, that would transform uh, your data into the fire format and then expose uh, fire APIs out of it. And we do have HS7V2 to fire visual data mapping uh, feature as well. So we provide the uh, HS7V2 standard uh, templates. We can uh, import them into the visual data mapper and then uh, you know, map it to the uh, fire uh, bundles or fire resources using a visual uh, view. We, we have generated uh, fire API definitions. If you are familiar with the fire standard, there's no uh, standard swagger or open API specifications uh, provided by the HL seller. So there are different open source solutions that exist there, but there are issues uh, when it comes to uh, really using those uh, swagger, the open API specifications. So WSO2 open healthcare platform comes with the uh, API definitions, pre-built API definitions for you, uh, for all the uh, specifications. And, uh, you know, if you expand this search operation, you would see the, uh, you would see all the search parameters listed uh, pre-built uh, to you, so that you can uh, import these uh, API definitions into the API designer and start creating the API interfaces. Once you uh, create the API interfaces, uh, you, you can uh, apply uh, fine-grained access control using OAuth scopes. You can uh, you know, change the visibility of the APIs. You can uh, apply throttling rate limiting limits uh, onto those five APIs. And then you can publish the API. Once you publish the APIs, the APIs will be available in a rebrandable developer portal. So uh, the, the, the developer portal is also a must with the CMS regulation. You need to expose your fire APIs to the third party application developers uh, through a developer portal. And then uh, they can uh, see, see uh, the APIs, read them, uh, download the SDKs. Uh, you know, they can communicate with you and also they can create applications and subscribe your APIs and then start consuming them. So in a nutshell, uh, we have several fire accelerators. Uh, I've already, already spoken about uh, any of these, but there are uh, additional uh, accelerators for its 12 message support. And when it comes to EMR systems, we have CERN uh, API connectors and we are uh, continuously expanding our EMR uh, 
support uh, in our roadmap. And then uh, we, we can connect to custom data sources so, so that you can uh, transform your uh, data into fire form and easily using the accelerators we just uh, noticed. In the near future, we would be building, uh, we, we are already in the plan, in the words of building a, a bootstrap tool that will help you to uh, bootstrap your uh, your open healthcare platform using the fire APIs you want. So you can basically uh, say these are the fire APIs, fire resources that you want to expose, and then you can uh, say uh, you know deploy them into uh, into the environment. And you can configure the backend services, et cetera, if there are standard uh, so standard EMR systems like Epic Cerna, you can uh, you know, uh, mark them. And then we'll try to automatically map uh, these fire resources you want to expose to the EMR systems and uh, give you a, a templated bootstrapped uh, WSO2 Open Healthcare platform so that you can you know, you have a base to start with, and then you can do change any changes you want and proceed. So the, now we look, looked at the AWS to help uh, platform, uh, the, you know, the features it has, but then the, there's this question why you would choose a API led, you know, approve an API led integration platform instead of going to a niche uh, purpose-built uh, healthcare solution. So there's this, you know, as, as I explained, the CMS regulation, but you shouldn't just think of, you know, checking the box of the regulation and comply with it and then forget about this. Uh, and if you are a CIO, uh, CHO, of an organization, you should think beyond the uh, CMS regulation and try to be innovative and try to uh, make uh, this as an opportunity to uh, step up uh, your business and uh, you know open up more revenue opportunities. So in order to do that, you can't uh, just focus on the regulation and get a niche solution and get get done with it. You have to uh, you have to uh, you know, buy a vendor or buy a solution that has more features than whatever the features that you want only to meet the regulation. And uh, we have uh, accelerators to uh, speed up your uh, fire transformation capabilities. Uh, we can auto-generate your capability statement. So if you are familiar with fire server concept, uh, there's a, uh, a requirement to expose a capability statement out of the fire server uh, and we can basically auto generate it uh, by looking at the fire apis that are deployed in the runtime and the fire api definitions uh, we provide you out of the box fire api definitions so uh, uh, which can be easily used to implement the apis interfaces Other, otherwise you have to hand code them uh, by looking at the specification and uh, WS2 platform is a low code, supports a low code integration. You don't have to write a lot, lot of Java code uh, to uh, implement this solution. We have visual data mapping, uh, HS7 XJS support, EMR connectors, uh, and uh, OpenID Connect O2 uh, certification. So the CMS regulation mandates you expose your APIs through uh, OpenID Connect and Auth2. Uh, uh, and uh, the authorization should be handled through Auth2. So a WSO2 platform will be a perfect fit for it. Uh, you don't have to buy another separate identity provider in order to accomplish that. The WSO2 Open Healthcare platform will have pre-built uh, solution for you to support the OpenID Connect or two. And identity federation. So there are some cases where if you are a healthcare provider, you may already have uh, you know, some LDAP or an identity uh, provider in-house that has your patient data. So if, if that's the case, you don't have to switch to a different IDP. Uh, you can seamlessly integrate uh, with the IDP 
of the WS2 Open Healthcare Platform using the Identity Federation features. You can deploy the platform in any uh, infrastructure of your choice. Uh, we we don't have a we don't have a only cloud solution. Uh, you can deploy us on prem, on cloud, uh, in containers, uh, and also you know, in what, whatever the infrastructure you want to uh, deploy. WS2 to help open healthcare platform provides out of the box consent management. So consent management is also um, part of the regulation where I ask the patient uh, if I give my uh, authorization or consent to a third party application to access my data on behalf of me, I should be able to log in into a self-care portal and uh, revoke those uh, given uh, consent and then uh, uh, not at, at any uh, time that I want. So uh, that is provided out of the box with the WS2 platform. And we support uh, decentralized deployments. You can deploy a, a platform in microservices architecture. Uh, you can have uh, different um, microservice clusters uh, and deploy different files, subsets of file APIs in those uh, uh, clusters. And we support multi-tenancy. So if you are planning to build, a, uh, if you are a, a health IT vendor, and if you are planning to build a SaaS solution, uh, you, you, using uh, Fire uh, and the EMRs, et cetera, you can leverage our solution and uh, it supports multi-tenancy and it provides all these features that we discuss uh, through uh, each and every tenant. So with that, I have come to the end of my session. So if you are interested to get to know more and see a demo uh, in, uh, from your, you know, if you are interested to see a demo, et cetera, just contact us from, through, through our website, wstu.com uh, slash solutions slash healthcare. Uh, we have a sandbox environment as well. Uh, you can access, uh, you can request to access that and we'll be able to provision you a user account. And there are three, uh, two webinars uh, that we have already uh, did. Um, so uh, you can uh, find them out from this and there will be another webinar in September.